I'm Professor Julian García Feijó from Madrid, Spain. First, I, I would like to remind that the current treatment algorithm is a little bit rigid. So we have to move from this algorithm to focus more on the, patient, on the patient's need. So we are thinking always in a very medical way. So we are talking about IOP, glaucoma type, um, <clears throat> but we have to consider other factors. It's true that now we are also talking about blood pressure, perfusion pressure, but all those are medical concepts. So now probably we have to go for a more patient-focused um, <clears throat> questions. For instance, obviously when we talk about IOP range or IOP tar or target pressure, we are considering age and life expectancy. I'm not referring uh, of, uh, of those concepts. I'm talking more about quality of life, patient's preferences. Um, for many years, these were not considered relevant, and I think that's very relevant. So we have now many options, medical options, laser, we have new surgery, so we really have to uh, give the opportunity to the patient to consider the advantages of the different options. So it's not only just about the disease itself, but also the patient. I think these new uh, imaging technologies, they probably can help us not for diagnosis, because we are very good in diagnosing glaucoma right now with the current technology. So probably they will help us to address the two major challenges that I think we have now. The first challenge is how to identify those patients who are at higher risk for progression. And trying to know that from the beginning of a diagnosis, and that's, that's a difficult thing. And the second is to help us to also identify those patients who can benefit the most from the different uh, surgical options, which is also, we, we don't know, for instance, which is the patient or what type of patient could be, be better, or we can obtain better results from a trabecular uh, mix device, for instance. So, um, related to the first challenge, how to identify those high-risk patients, we probably have to combine the different, um, uh, uh, different variables that we can obtain from the OCT images, for example. Corneal images. We know that there are <coughs> the, the changes or the biomechanics of the cornea and also the lamina cribosa are related to a, let's say, a structural um, weakness that can affect some patients. So probably, also, we have to combine this information with other biomarkers or with the IOP sensor information that will be provided super very soon. And obviously, to manage all that information, all that variables and biomarkers, we need something as we clinicians cannot do that. So probably we need artificial intelligence to help us to handle all that great amount of information, big data. So probably we are going to combine structural information, functional information, and other information about the patient itself. And for the other challenge, how we can identify those patients who are good candidates for a trabecular uh, device, for instance, probably we really need this information about the outflow system. Is it working? Is it going to work? and how is the stage of the disease too, and how is the impact of the stage of the disease on that. And if we could have this information pre-op, pre -op, that would be perfect, because we are not going to take this particular patient with a damaged outflow system or trabecular outflow system to the theater to do a trabecular implant. We will choose another one. So this will help also to profiling the patients and choosing the best candidates for each, for each surgery. This is an important question. So the thing is that probably um, <clears throat> not only uh, meetings, papers, but also webinars, these approaches are very important. 
So something that, like the one we are doing today. So um, we really have to think that the glaucoma pathologists are not very good in communicating these things. So we have to improve that. And if we think as a reference, uh, the knowledge that the comprehensive ophthalmologists they have about IOLs, for example, they know almost everything about toric IOLs, multifocal, trifocal, and they know that the they can be used in a variety of patients. So we really have to do the same with the new glaucoma uh, surgeries. And we have to communicate the comprehensive ophthalmology and they have to know that there are many options that can be offered to the patient. And probably uh, that's a, a challenge that we have to, to accept and we have to do our best to, to improve the knowledge of the comprehensive ophthalmologists, as I have said.